What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the next episode of Elude Stalwart Plays. Uh, reading a book. I'm I'm reading the Life Force book by Tony Robbins. We last left off with the preface. Now I'm gonna do section one. So beginning here, this is called the Life Force Revolution. Join me on a journey to answer some of the life's most important questions and become the CEO of your own health. Learn how to learn how stem cells are driving the regenerative medicine revolution. Discover the latest in preventative, predictive, personalized diagnostic tools that could literally save your life or that of someone you love and discover the four vitality ingredients that Harvard geneticists and longevity expert David Sinclair, PhD, has used to reverse his biological age by 20 years. Life Force, Chapter 1, Life Force, Our Greatest Gift. Connect to the supreme and vital power of your life force. Uh, let, me, let me show y'all what I'm reading here. Not get ahead of myself. This is the last page I just read. That's the section one. Join me on a journey. And now we're on Chapter 1, Life Force, Our Greatest Gift. Connect to the supreme and vital power of your life force. This is an Indian proverb here. It says, quote, A healthy person has a thousand wishes but a sick person has only one, end quote. It starts out by saying, I'm walking through the open air of St. Peter's Square, past the immense dome of the Vatican, awed by the grandeur and the beauty of this magnific magnificent setting. As I walk up the white marble steps up to the Vatican Hall, I see that the heads are certain, uh, I see he all the heads are suddenly turning. I follow their gaze and I notice an older man with a benevolent smile and a humble expression walking towards me. I look directly into his eyes as, I, as we reach out to shake hands, and then I realize it's the Holy Father, the Pope. I travel to the Vatican for a landmark meeting with some of the greatest scientific minds in the world. They've flocked here for a conference hosted by Pope Francis himself. I've been invited to deliver the final speech to a room full of pioneers in regenerative medicine, one of the great honors of my life. Over three spellbinding days, we listen to a stream of brilliant scientists, doctors, and healthcare entrepreneurs. They speak with urgency and passion about the solutions that they've been developing to combat the dev deadly and devastating uh, medical disorders. They share mind-blowing revelations about new methods to restore their body at a cellular and molecular level. Therapies that can reinvigorate muscles and joints and blood vessels and revive damaged organs, conquer illnesses that previously seemed incurable. They take us on deep dives into stem cell treatments, gene therapies, and other life-changing innovations that amplify the body's natural capacity to repair and renew itself. As you'll soon discover, many of these advances are so stunning uh, that even non-religious people would describe them as miraculous. A spiritual leader to 1.3 billion Catholics around the world, Pope Francis wants to nurture these scientific miracles for the good of all humanity. In his welcoming, sp welcoming speech, he tells us how happy he is to have brought us together, quote, from different cultures, societies, and religions, end quote, to serve our shared mission of helping quote, those who suffer, end quote, and changing knowledge for, quote, for the benefit of all, end quote. The fact that Pope, the Pope himself is spearheading his historic event tells us just how far regenerative medicine has advanced. It speaks to enormous potential of these trailblazing approaches to eliminating suffering, restoring our health, and enhancing our well-being. In Rome, we had first we had a first-hand front-row seat to the impact of these unbelievable breakthroughs. We met a 15-year-old who's been given less than one percent chance, or a one in three chance of surviving leukemia, and was now more than 10 years later in perfect health thanks to a novel stem cell treatment. We've heard from people with advanced cancer who'd exhaust all their options with chemo and radiation and were sent home to die. But they didn't give up. They tried some some of the most amazing treatments you'll ever you'll be reading about here. And two years later, they weren't just surviving, but thriving, <clears throat> thriving. I've written this book to help you understand what all this excitement is about. I want to empower you to take full advantage of this revolution in diagnostics, biotechnology and regenerative medicine. 
It's already changed my life in ways I could have never imagined. It's transforming healthcare from top to bottom. It promises to expand our strength and vitality, potentially how long we can live. Oh, and potentially how long we can live. I want you to be among the first to benefit from these scientific discoveries because I know from my own exper experience how drastically they can improve the quality of your life. In fact, the practical knowledge that I'm about to share with you in these pages might actually save your life or the life of someone you love. The aim of this book is to give you the latest information in, on the astounding tools and therapies that are available right now and others that could soon be approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration or the FDA. These innovations will enable you to solve many of the most common health challenges before they get out of hand. Imagine being able to find your cancer at stage zero when it's supremely, uh, supremely treatable and ultimately curable. Wouldn't it be invaluable to understand your genetic risk factors and some of the tools available to lower or stop these risks from becoming a reality? Think of the power of being able to change your lifestyle to avoid degenerative problems like heart disease and diabetes. Did you know that one company is in the phase three trials with a tool that could help arthritis to help you regrow fresh cartilage like a teenager? Many, many of these developments are so astonishing that they sound like they'll be emerging in 20 or 30 years. In fact, many of these are happening right now. The speed of biotech and healthcare revolution this this uh the speed of the biotech and healthcare revolution is geometrically accelerating for two reasons. The first is a massive massive inflow of capital. While COVID-19 brought devastation to so many, it also served as a massive stimulus for investment. Despite the pandemic, more venture capital uh, more venture capital capital was invested in 2020 including a record 80 billion in healthcare startups alone than at any other time in history. There are more dollars than ever before driving more audacious medical and biotech, uh, biotech innovations from the research into the market. The second reason is that biology, now an information technology, which means that the field of medicine is getting both better and cheaper at warp speed. Thanks to technology, Every phase of medical treatment is being reimagined. On the front end, sensors and networks are upending medical diagnostics. In the middle, robotics and 3D printing are reinventing traditional medical procedures. And on the back end, artificial intelligence or AI, genomics, cellular medicine, gene therapies, and gene editing are transforming medicines themselves. Taken all together, biotech is remaking sick care into genuine health care. It's changing the medicine from one size, a one-size-fits-all system that we all grew up with to a totally new model, the future-looking, proactive, personalized, and precision medicine. Not only is healthcare being transformed from top to bottom by geometric pro pro progression in technology, but costs are plummeting as they are in areas of daily life as they are in other areas of daily life. For example, we forgot how much cell phones used to cost. It actually had, uh, <clears throat> I actually had the first commercial model back in the 1980s. It was a Motorola that set me back almost $4,000, $3,995, the equivalent of more than $10,000 today. I was more than a, f it was more than a foot long and weighed nearly two pounds. The battery, <laughs> the battery charged for six hours and it gave you 30 minutes of talk time. Today, you can get the latest Apple iPhone for free with most cell service contracts, and it has 100 times more computational power than the computer that took Apollo 11 astronauts to the moon. Or think about this. Your computer runs on microchips. Those are the brains of the machine. The first microchip contained 4,000 transistors that cost a dollar a piece. Today's state-of-the-art microchips feature more than 6 trillion transistors that cost an infinitesimal fraction of a penny. They're 6,500 uh, 6, times faster than 4.2 million times cheaper. Our access to information, education, and entertainment has expanded exponentially as well. Every single day, 82 years worth of new video is uploaded to YouTube including entire courses from nearly every university in the world. How do these tre trends relate to healthcare? 
Well, consider this. Less than 25 years ago, it took more than a decade and cost $2.7 billion to read a complete human genome. The full set of genetic instructions for a, personal, uh, for, for a person's growth and development, by the way. Today, it's done for under $600 and completed overnight. We now have the technology to write over, quote unquote, a genome to cure sickle cell anemia and some forms of congenital blindness. Stem cells can regrow healthy lungs once thought to be damaged beyond repair. Other living, quote unquote, medicines uh, using enhanced T cells and natural killer or NK cells can supercharge our immune system. Pharmaceutical quality over-the-counter supplements exist today that can restore and enhance our technology and zest for highest for the highest possible quality of life. Do I have your attention? Are you ready to join me on this new adventure or on this adventure? In fact, the innovations I've just mentioned are only a sliver of what you'll find in the chapters ahead. But before we go any further into the marbles of regenerative medicine, before we share more about these life-changing, life-saving formulas, I need to tell you a story. I need to explain what brought me to the Vatican in the first place, what happened in my own life to make me rethink everything that I thought I knew about health and healthcare. After all, if you told me 10 years ago I'd be rubbing shoulder to shoulder with these scientific superstars, I would have laughed. And I, this is from the perspective of Dr. David Sinclair, by the way. So how did I, of all people, become an evangelist for these groundbreaking advances in cellular and molecular medicine? How did I learn that our bodies could self-renew and self-heal to the point that scientific fiction is turning into science fact? In short, how did I end up here with you right now preparing to tell you about all these remarkable technologies, breakthroughs, advances that I'm convinced that could help you and your loved ones live a much healthier, longer, more vibrant, energetic, and more joyful life? Question mark? From pain to power. Do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up. This is Nelson Mandela's quote. Or got back up again. Nelson Mandela. Like all of us, I arrived where I am today because of a series of decisions. Some of them were conscious and deliberate, but as I look back, I believe without a doubt in some element of grace. The time whenever I was guided to the right answer. When, I was challenged, when challenging circumstances reshaped my core beliefs and made me willing to seize an opportunity that changed everything. I'm sure you've experienced moments like this in your life. You know what I'm talking about where something ter terrible had happened, something painful that you'd never want to go through again, or have anyone you care about go through, but afterwards you realize that that challenging time had made you grow. It made you care more. It produced a different level of drive that helped you improve the quality of your life or the lives of ones that you loved. Many of these painful experiences are what prepared me to write this book. Some of the darkest and most difficult times gave me the insights that I'm ready to share with you today. Insights that can boost your health, happiness, and vitality. That can make life truly worth living. It all began with the gift of growing up in a tough environment. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of love in my family. But up my upbringing was also filled with violence, chaos, insecurity, and fear. My mom was one wonderful in so many ways, but she struggled with addictions to alcohol and prescription drugs. Many times we were too broke to buy food or clothes. I was desperate for answers, desperate to learn anything that could ease my suffering. For as long as I can remember, I also hated to see others suffer. That's why I spent more than uh, four and a half decades of my life working to help millions of people uncover the most effective strategies to get from where they are to where they truly want to be, to achieve their dreams and more to live a life of meaning and fulfillment. I'm obsessed with helping people lift themselves from pain to power. But when I started out, I didn't have a single role model for success or achievement. So what could I do? Where could I turn for my insights and inspiration? I turned to books, my great escape. I discovered that I could enter the world of philosophy by reading essays of Ralph Waldo Emerson. I could enter the world of psychology by reading Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. So I took a speed reading course and set myself a goal of reading a book a day. As you might have predicted, that turned out to be a bit of a stretch. But I was so hungry for knowledge, I read more than 700 books in seven years. 
I raced through them in an insatiable quest to learn everything and anything that I could to help me or anyone that would listen to me. In high school, I was known as Mr. Solution. If you had a question, I had an answer. When I was 17 years old and supporting myself by working as a janitor, I found my first moment of grace. I met Jen Rohn, a renowned personal development speaker and business philosopher. Jim was the man who helped me set a uh, C that things for a change. Uh, I think this is Tony Robbins. <laughs> I said this was Dr. St. Clair. I thought that was Dr. St. Clair. <laughs> He's like, for me to set things for a change, I had to change. For my life to get better, I had to get better. Bemoaning my past wouldn't get me to a brighter future. Complaining about my current stressful circumstance wouldn't help. Neither would hoping my luck would change or wishing it on a star. What Jim taught me was this. If you want to succeed at anything, whether it's building a hugely profitable business, constructing a stormproof investment portfolio, or creating a health, healthy lifestyle that fills you with boundless energy, you need to study people who have already achieved the result that you're after. In other words, success leaves clues. If a person has sustained success in any long-term ambition, whether it's losing weight, growing a business, sustaining an extraordinary relationship, then luck has nothing to do with that. They're doing something different than you are. So you need to understand exactly what they're doing differently and precisely how they've mastered the skills so you'll replicate their success. Jim got me started and focused on uh, the few who do in life, not just the many who talk. I began to appreciate the value of role models, those people who can help you identify a proven approach instead of expending all your energy in trial and error. If there's already pa a path paved to exp uh, a paved express lane to power, why not follow it? But remember, I was Mr. Solution, so I kept reading voraciously and I kept studying the most successful people in every area that I wanted to master. I kept applying their time-tested strategies. Before long, I gathered enough answers to become a coach. I began a one-on-one -on -one session to build up uh, I began with one-on-one -on -one sessions and built up a small seminar and then groups of several hundreds of people. Before long, I was working with Olympic gold medalists, billionaire businessmen, and some of the world's greatest entertainment uh, entertainers. I had found my calling. It was a beautiful life. I had the opportunity to share the insights and strategies I learned to help others connect with their inner strength, courage, and purpose. And most important, I found out how to get quicker, faster, and more satisfying results. But the truth is, I was a different person back then than I am today. In those early years of my career, I didn't yet know how to handle the fearful part of the ancient fight or flight brain that existed inside of us all. I'm guessing you've exper experienced this too. Those times when your uncertainty runs wild, spurring your mind to invent far-fetched disaster scenarios that would earn you a fortune if you wrote and made for TV movies. I must have watched a lot of those films because I started to develop a terrible sense of foreboding about my future. Rationally, I could see that it was no fluke that my career had taken flight. I was working 18 to 20 hours a day on a mission to serve. But an awful thought kept me warming, kept warming into my brain. What if the reason I'd been successful so quickly was that because I was destined to die young? Once I allowed myself to dwell in irrational fears, my mind kept creating more of them. As I've taught people for years, where focus goes, energy flows. So you better direct your focus, but this is foreboding was crazy. I wasn't, it wasn't just my anxiety about an untimely death. I worried about my tragic demise and how it would be, uh, I worried that my tragic demise would be slow and agonizing.